Hey, welcome to church today. We are so glad that you joined us. And especially if this is your first time, you are so welcome. My name is Florent. And my name is Jules. Come it on. is so awesome to be joining around the world right. in our venues, at our homes and yeah. online. Come and on. if it is your first time, you are welcome. So and good. we would love to hear from you. So send us right. an email, send us a message in our chat and connect with one of our hosting yeah. in your location. Yes, and also we are on social media and all the social social media platforms we are there and we would love you just to give us a follow and you know we just want you to get involved and be updated of everything that is going on across our churches around the world and one of the things that we are trying to get everyone involved in is run for goma now together as a church we are trying to raise money for one of our one by one partners uh, which is justice rising now justice rising is an organization in drc congo that is actually in the process of raising funds to rebuild uh, and repair schools that were devastated during the recent uh, volcanic eruption in congo so we want to be involved in that and yes all we want to do all we can to help yeah. so mark saturday the 25th of yes. september in your day and we are asking everyone to grab a group of friends yes. and run a sponsored 10k, 5k or half marathon or even more if you can and yes. raise money for this project. Come on and yes you can actually go and sign up on the website of One by One Funds. It's onebyonefunds.org slash fundraiser and go ahead and just download your uh, fundraising pack. We want to raise as much money as possible so that we can really help and be involved in this. And also you can go on social media, on, on Instagram, at One by One Funds and just give them a follow. We want you to be updated of everything that's going on. Come on. We believe that the church is the hope of the world yes. and that is why we are so passionate about raising the next generation of leaders to make a difference to people and the nation around them. Yes, and that's why we run our academy leadership courses across our locations and if you haven't done academy yet, this could be for you. Here's a little bit about it. In Freedom Church, we are passionate about seeing anyone, anywhere connect to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. That means that we want to share the message of the gospel of Jesus whenever and wherever we can, connecting with the people around us, sharing our faith, discipling others, kicking off fire starter communities and even planting churches. Over the years of multiplication, we've learned that all of this is impossible without one crucial resource, leaders. So we've developed a leadership training program called The Academy. The heart of The Academy is to raise and release leaders to fulfill their calling in whatever way God asks them to. Whether that means stepping up to take responsibility in their local campus or moving across the world to plant relevant, passionate church in a new place. The Academy program is for 18 to 30 year olds and runs in Hereford in the UK and Raleigh, North Carolina in the States. It's a two day a week training program designed to develop leadership by helping you understand your identity and authority, deepen your knowledge of the Bible, grow your confidence and inspire you towards what God has ahead of you. We talk about pastoral ministry, church planting skills, character development, growing our God given giftings and we get even more excited about this beautiful thing called the church. We've seen hundreds of people complete this course. And if you're not close to our academy locations or you fall outside the age bracket, then we run a condensed course called Academy Plus in some of our locations too. If you're interested in a year of training and growth and friendship and adventure, take a look at our website or have a chat with your leader or campus pastor. If God's been speaking to you about finding your purpose, getting more involved or just living out the Great Commission in an even stronger way, we would love to meet you. I really believe that doing Academy is one of the ways that you're going to start dreaming big. And we are currently in a series called Daring Dreamer and it's been so far so good. It's been really inspiring. It's been just amazing. And today we have part four of Daring Dreamer. Come on. Before we head into worship and hear a message from Pastor G, yeah. here's a little video from one of the biggest dreamers that will inspire the dreamer in you. Come on. What do you want to be when you grow up? A firefighter. I would like to be a doctor when I grow up. A footballer. Family, you know? 
and the artist Billy Notice. I want to be a zookeeper, an archer. I want to be a singer, a policeman. A policeman. If you could do one good thing, what would it be? Uh, probably we need to supply like good food and like a good home for people in poverty. Making the world a better place. <laughs> Find a cure for people who are like struggling with like things like cancer and leukemia. I think it would um, plant things. Clean it up. Cleaning up. Teach everyone about God and Jesus' miracles. Donate £1,000 to a charity for homeless people. What's your biggest dream? My biggest dream is uh, if I were in a wonderland, I would like to ride um, my own pet unicorn. Dreaming of being a football player and scoring a goal. Um, live in Australia. I'd love to live in Australia. Uh, to make uh, movies and uh, games and stuff. If you could do one thing and not be scared, what would it be? Um, dive to the deepest of the ocean. I will be in a cliff and I will jump from the cliff all the way into the water. <laughs> Probably like going to one of the big bowls at a skate park and singing in front of a big crowd. Basically just incorporate the live or die empty DNA into my life. What would you say to someone who's trying to achieve their dream? Never, ever, ever give up. Keep going. You're doing a very good job. Don't give up. Wow, don't work hard. You can do it. Keep going. Never give up.
took me so long to believe it Do you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never
So we want to welcome you, Freedom Church. Or if you're joining us for the first time, we want you to feel so welcome because we're in a series called Daring Dreamers. And this is for every person. I believe that every person has a dream that needs to be awakened by God. You see, we have some dreams that are good dreams. There's nothing wrong with them. But it's almost like if you have a a book with sort of 12 chapters, it's almost like your own dreams only represent one of those chapters. Live the bigger life that God has for you with the daring dreams that come from heaven. How can you awaken those dreams? And I want to grab hold of everyone that's listening right now as we uh, unpack what God's Word says today. We're going to be always tempted to gravitate to what we understand and what we feel comfortable with because the trouble with daring dreamers, it takes us to a place where we don't understand and we're out of control <laughs> and we prefer to sort of fall in line and follow those that have gone before us when God is saying, I want you to make a new way. And I'm speaking to some people today that you already have a plan and you have things mapped out even for the rest of this year and the next five years. And you got sort of, yeah, I've got some plans and we know that not just having a, a dream is good, but you need a plan. But unless that plan is really submitted to God, unless you come in and say, God, what are you doing? What is the daring dream upon my life? We could fall short in procrastination. And that is the whole thing. We saw that in that fantastic creative that we had at the cave. It was like, you need to go after the dream that God has for you. So we're going to venture into something today that's going to awaken, I believe, some of those dreams that God has put in us. But it will demand a response. I think it's, it's so easy that we just plan and do things because we've just, there's an expectation. And yet God comes and he has a greater dream for us. We come out of the cave a few weeks ago, and we launched a whole new vision, Salt Winds. And I want to refer to that because when you launch a vision, you you don't want to just like move on as if, well, we've launched that now. I'm going to build into it. I'm going to come in and provoke you through the scripture of, and we actually use this at the at the cave, Hebrews 11 verse 7 age. Remember all about uh, Noah building the ark and this amazing image of Noah who sort of almost, it appears, single-handedly he builds something almost the size of the Titanic. Now it took him over 100 years, so this is like a long-term commitment. He has staying power. He believes in the dream and he hasn't actually seen the sort of rain that is going to carry this ark. But he's building this ark, why? Because God has said to, and it says here, by faith, Noah, right? Guys, if we're going to do anything, it's got to be by faith. You can do your dreams in your own faith or through God's faith. And there is this faith that by faith Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen. Can we just highlight that? It's it's great. We want to see it before we believe it. We want to see it. Can you just unpack the salt winds thing so we can understand it a bit more? We're like building this crazy sort of ark that's going to save people. Can you explain a bit more so I can get on board with it? And yet right here we see Noah, this incredible man who, who stood with faithfulness. He hadn't seen it. He couldn't understand what it looked like. But in holy fear, built an ark. So he could not see, but he chose to build. Freedom Church, <laughs> you might not see what's coming, because I haven't got a clue myself, <laughs> All I know is God has spoken to us as a leadership team in Freedom Church. He said, you better get building. In fact, I've been preparing you all this time. There's even builders. Assemble the builders. Call the the army of creatives to build the ark that will bring salvation into the earth. Oh, I know you don't understand it and you haven't seen it yet. Don't you presume that you're copying something? No, this is something unique. This is something for the season. So in holy fear, he built the ark to save his family. And I think when I talk about the salt winds blueprint, we talk about Noahic technology because Noah was building something they'd never ever seen in the earth. And the blueprint, when you see a blueprint, there is something about, you know, this is the sort of plan. It's like the architect's plan, but it's, it's almost on paper. It's in heaven's grid. And that's what he's downloaded to us so far. And he said, here's, here's the plan. Okay, I know you don't quite know how this is going to look, but here's the plan. Here's the steps. And right now we're looking at this blueprint that God has given us. And he says, build. 
build. You better build. Because when the day comes, it's too late to start building. Noah didn't wait for the flood. Can you imagine? It's like the flood's coming. We better get going. It wouldn't have happened. But he found someone that was willing to, to build something beyond what he understood. See, the ark was the transportation mechanism for salvation. Salt winds is going to be the transportation mechanism that we bring the gospel to the world like we've never seen before. Even now, some of our faiths are struggling to sort of comprehend how, how, how can this work? But God is saying, will you choose faith? Now, I'm going to speak now from Isaiah. So we're, we're like really going into it today. Isaiah 54, verse 1. It says, sing, barren woman. You who never bore a child burst into song. Shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. So I, I feel as I'm bringing this word today, there is something, it's not just some teaching. It's not just, oh, I got this message. I believe there's, there's a prophetic like unction in this. There's like this power that's coming. It's coming right now in waves, right? It's going to come in waves as I speak that, that God is speaking to us. And he gave me this scripture. I thought, what? Sing, you barren woman. That's a bit like straight. We've got the ark. We've got the blueprint of salt winds. And then God is saying, sing, you barren woman. Sing, you desolate grounds. Sing the desert and break forth into springs. Oh, this, this, this sounds a little bit like this God I know. This sounds a little bit like the Jesus that calls out life from a tomb that has been closed and a man walks out from it because he says, no, I'm calling you back to life. There's something. See, see when we look at Isaiah 54, it's speaking into barrenness. It's speaking into emptiness. It's speaking into lack. And what he's saying to us is, don't, don't wait until you see things change. Be the change. Speak the change. And how do you do it? By starting to sing. What barren woman sings with joy? The one that believes that God can change all things. The one that believes that God is able to do immeasurably more than you can ever imagine. Oh, see, we're starting to allow faith is starting to, to fire here. It's like, oh, right. Well, so, so I don't just stand by looking at my lack of my situation. Even with salt winds, when I look at it, I think, God, we're, we're a small movement. We're a, we're a small group of people. We even come from Hereford. It's like, you know, one knows of this place around the world. And, and that there is something God is saying, don't you look at the lack. Don't you look at, don't you look at what you're going to need. Look to me as the provider. See, there's something powerful. And he's saying, but I want you to sing over barrenness. So where there is great need and we think, how are we going to do that? How are we going to fulfill that? How are we going to find the, the millions that will take to do this? He says, you do it by taking a posture of singing with joy. <laughs> we just need to sing. I'm actually going to sing to the barrenness. I'm going to sing to it. I'm going to sing it into reality. Isaiah 53, the chapter just before this, you should know this. This is all about the suffering servant. Famous chapter, what? It's all about Jesus going to the cross. Giving, I mean, it's absolutely so emotive, so powerful. And then we skip straight into verse 1 here about sing, you barren woman. Doesn't it seem almost like a bit out of context? What's God doing? Because he's saying, oh no, the sacrifice was made. The Savior's coming. He will fulfill everything, all of your needs. Sing into the barrenness. Sing where you see doubt. Sing where you see failure. Sing where you see like the enemy's coming like a flood because it will not prosper. See, it's like, oh, I'm going to sing. I'm going to choose to sing. I've learned to do this on some of the days when I've been my, my most down and my, my most low and I don't know if there's going to be a way through. I've just got this little like itch called the Holy Spirit it says, time to sing. Time to sing. Yet everything within us wants to close down, put our hands down, and sit in fear while God is saying, sing. So God is asking us to do the opposite of what it feels like. Right through Scripture, this is faith. 
He's asking the daring dreamers not just to have a daring dream, but to take action. But there's something more than just taking action. And it's for the church, it's for us. And that, this is what I want to share with you, this concept, because here it comes. Are you ready? <laughs> so we see the whole of Isaiah 54, when you look at it, it's, it's calling us back to sing over the lack. That we don't live a life that's rooted in emptiness, but we live a life that is rooted in him. There's a pregnancy. And as we go forward right now, I'll I'll read you the rest of it. Here it is. This is what I I want for you today. Isaiah 54, 2 to 3, it says, Why should you sing? Enlarge the place of your tent, God says today. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out the right to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. So my word to you today, Freedom Church, what God is saying, the servant Jesus, he comes, he pays the ultimate price. He comes and he says, oh, oh, I've equipped the church for all that you need to do. All I've got the system in place. See, this system and the Noahic technology is in place to bring salvation for those that want it. And he's saying, do you know what? Through that, you've got to be ready to stretch. You've got to be ready to enlarge. This word, right, the daring dreamers, is like we have a daring dream. We can like take some action. But if it's not based in verse 2 and 3, this idea of it's time to enlarge, church. So my word to you is enlarge. My word to you, Freedom Church, right now. My word to you, believer, individual, it doesn't matter where you are right now, is enlarge. Stretch, stretch. It's time to stretch out. What God has in mind, there's there's something he's challenging us to do. So we've got these three main areas. How do you enlarge? By stretching. God wants to stretch our faith. This will stretch our faith more than anything so far, this vision. Stretch your faith. Can I actually stretch my faith? Yeah, you can. That's when you get out of a boat and you feel like you're sinking. When you start sinking in the water and you're heading to Jesus, but you walked some. You stretch your faith. To stay in the boat, you see, that's the place where it's easier. But the place you're going to grow and stretch your faith is when you step out with risk. place where you may get wet or even become embarrassed by the result. Number two, it says lengthen. It's like lengthen these, you know, the, the cords. Make it bigger. Make it bigger. You've got to make, make, make the capacity bigger. And when you lengthen, I just think of capacity. God is increasing our capacity, your capacity. You thought, oh, I feel like some of you came in today and thought, do you know, I just feel so stretched at the minute. I've got some news for you. You can stretch even more than what you're stretched right now if you do it through God. There is something about stretching. You, you would be amazed at the capacity God built within you when you become a daring dreamer under his command. I could have never dreamt of what God was going to do with us as a, that little church when we started. But he just said, stretch your faith, lengthen your cords. We went, we went to Cardiff. We said, oh, well, what if we went to Kampala, Uganda? It's like, stretch your cords, church. Stretch your faith. Other people ridiculing, saying, really? That seems such a foolish idea. And, it's, and God's all the time saying, no, it's not just about a location. It's about stretching your faith. Lengthen the cords of capacity. And then thirdly, it says about strengthen. When I think strengthen the tent pegs, you need bigger tent pegs than the smaller frame. A smaller tent just needs these little pegs. But when you get a big tent, it catches the wind. It's something significant. You're going to need to get some great big pegs that like of steel that are going to go into the ground so that when the storms come, when the, you build with capacity, it's talking about character. It's saying to us as the church, you've got to get character. You've got to get holiness. You've got to get, you've got to get this fixed. That's why in holy fear he built the ark. Building, calling us to build, getting ready for what God has. So what God is doing is he, he is calling us not just to be daring dreamers, not just to have an action plan, but he's basically calling us to create space. This is a message. <laughs> Speak this to us right now. 
create space. He's saying, if you're going to build this thing, if you're going to build salt winds, if you're going to take this gospel, you need to build space before you see it. Many of us want to see it before we build the space. Oh, we're expanding now. We, you know, we got some. We can't get any more people in, and we in, in the art. We oh, we better build a bigger one. If Noah did that, he'd have an eight-man boat. But God said, "Build this massive thing." And then what did he do? He brought the animals. <laughs> what he was, but only at the end, after over a hundred years. So Noah must have been there saying, what am I building all this for? How are we going to like see this vision come through? It's like crazy. And he says, you just build it and they will come. Freedom Church, build it and they will come. Salt winds, build it and they will come. Build it, the finance will come. Build it, the creatives will come. Build it, the technology will come. Build it, the intercessors will hold it up. <laughs> church, church, I'm telling you, there is something about space, creating space, that is so key. He doesn't just say pray into it. He doesn't just say hope it, wish it. We're just going to wish that somehow this ark appears. He doesn't do that with Noah. It's like go down to the woods and you find a huge boat I built for you. He says, no, you're going to do it one plank at a time. We so easily want God to do it all for us. We just say, no, take some action, be a dare and dream, but create space. When he had the blueprints, I believe he cleared that sort of space. He cleared the area. What did he do? He created space. And he, and he measured from the front to the back, but he put down the first piece. And all the time he was imagining the blueprint. He was imagining the plan. He was saying, oh, you better not put anything over there. Don't plant anything here because I need all this space for what God is doing. What he's about to bring. See, we so often want to borrow it from someone else. You cannot borrow faith. It needs to be you. It needs to be ours. We need to bring what God has placed within us. We need to begin building and making space. Because this is what I want to share with you. We've got this, uh, certainly in many parts of the world, we've got this place from the Swedish called uh, Ikea. And, and it sort of has been a, a blessing and a curse in my life, <laughs> frankly, you know, when you're there trying to build something and there's a piece missing and it's sort of, a, you know, it, it's been helpful for us to sort of build our furniture and stuff. But over the years when we've gone and said, you know what, we need a new table because we've got five boys, we need a big table and it's like going to be this big. And we, it would be crazy if we went and picked up our table and I turned back at home and came and said to Heather, right, I've got the table, let's build it. This is what we have the vision and the plan for. We've saved for this, we've paid for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start building it to find it doesn't even fit in the room. Some of us have actually got the room, but we've got no space. Some of us have filled our houses with clutter, and there's no room for the miracle provision of God. Some of you right now are praying for things that you have got no space for. Some of you are sort of, you want God to move, but you've got no space. Before the table came, we cleared the space. We got rid of some things, some things that caused, there was like, there's just a clutter that we cannot bring the new thing, the new provision in. And God is saying to us right now, I'm in the business of clearing out. You need to clear out. This isn't just down to the church, it's down to our lives. There's so many things that we have come and placed in our lives, right? This is just one. Some of our diaries need clearing for what God's about to do. Some of us have priorities that actually trump God's priority in our life. We want to see a miracle, but our priorities are getting in the way. It's almost like, well, I've got room for you, uh, maybe 10.30 on a Sunday morning, God, to maybe 12. You know, um, it'd be great if you could move with a miracle in that period. And he's saying, hey, I want to come into your home. I want to come into your emotions. I want to come into those things you've locked away. I want to come in and start rebuilding some things, but you have stacked up things from the past. You have, you've stacked up labels about yourself that have actually said, do not touch. And God is saying, I want to touch it all over. 
Because I want the new you. I want to renew you. I want to see new things in you. And there is this thing about creating space. See, many of us want a miracle, but our, we have not got the space for a miracle. It's like, and if, if it turned up, it's like, well, I've got this sort of space here. How are seven people going to eat around that? God's provision will always be bigger. <laughs> His miracle will always be greater than the space you can provide. But there is this challenge here today. There's a challenge saying, have you already planned some of these things out? Have you filled your space with things, maybe even with your future? Maybe, I, I want to come right now back to Academy. I believe that there's some people that need to be on Academy this year because it will, it's part of being a daring dreamer. We got this infusion of daring dreams and salt winds that's bigger than what you've ever seen. And I think God is calling people in, but already you plan the next year, you plan perhaps the next two years. Maybe there's something around call it, I don't know, just something that, that you think, oh yeah, I've got all that planned. And it's like a good plan, but today God is coming to interrupt you. The interruption factor of God is coming and he's saying, this is your moment to respond to this. And you go, oh, I've planned this and I've done that and this all fits and it just so works. And then God is coming today saying, I'm disturbing you now. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to disturb you because there's a greater plan. And he said, will you put that on hold? Will you put it aside? Because if it's true, it will come back. But right now, I'm asking you by faith to step out. And become part of building something. Creating space in your life for something. Creating space for God to do the miracle. Life and thinking is connected to the space we create for God to move. That's how it works. Our life and our thinking is all connected to the space we allow God to move in. Oh, well, I did allow some space and God didn't really move. Really? Really? You did it a couple of times, felt disappointed. You keep creating space. When we look back over our years of following Jesus, every time there was a huge shift in our life, do you know what we did? We stopped, we cleared some things, and we made space for God to move. We rearranged some priorities. We paid for some things that cost us. See, we want to do it without any cost. We want to do it on the cheap. You can't create space cheaply, otherwise you're living a cheap life. We want to do it so it just falls in a place and there's provision. No, sometimes it will cost you. But you cannot outgive God, this is what I've learned. And if oh, it would be so easy if he'd have moved on the miracle, it's like, I'm all in. But he says, no, be all in. Then see the miracle. And some of us have walked around the wall six times and gave up and never walked the seventh. Some of us got a bit fed up and think he's not coming through. He says, come on, just one more time. Create the space for me to move, to cause a miracle. Stop rearranging the furniture in your house. You don't need to rearrange the furniture or go to a different church. You need to actually change and create space in your life. Think differently, do things differently, make decisions to give all of your life to me. Hmm. When I look at Moses... And this is a, a, just a quick word to parents here. When I look at Moses, it says in Hebrews that his parents looked at him as a baby and thought, there's something special about him. He didn't have three eyes or anything, but there was something about this baby, something special, and they hid him. And when they were wiping out those children, because again, the enemy was after the seed, and what they did is they hid him, but then they chose... Because of the destiny upon that child's life to put him in a basket in a crocodile infested waters as a parent. So we're going to trust you, God. You're going to protect the basket, the ark. He's going to end up because there's destiny over him. And as parents, we've got to release control. I'm speaking to some parents today. You've got to release some control. Some of you are still so fearful about what the future is going to look like. And it's like, well, we've got to push them in this direction. We've got to create the opportunity here. And some of those things are not God-led. 
They're actually our agenda. God is coming here today to say there's destiny that he put in your child's life. There's destiny. Even as we talk about the generations to come, this is a key generation that we're raising up right now. And I'm saying to you, it's so easy with fear to want to manipulate and control. And do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my son to do what I did. And I went to this school. And I went to this college. And I went on this career path when God is saying, I'm looking for some daring dreamers. Maybe you weren't a daring dreamer, but your son is called to be a daring dreamer. And he has a choice right now, but that choice is how you steward him or her. In the coming days of giving them opportunities of creativity, of supporting them when they make a decision that doesn't seem sort of very sensible, but God's in it. I want to fund daring dreamers. I want to get them to dream these big dreams. So I want to ask you, what space are you giving your kids? What space are you creating to say, come on, God, will you move? And if we need to release them, we're going to do that. Because God's got them. See, the devil wants to stop the daring dreamer, and in fact, he wants to bury the daring dreamers. I've got some uh, headlines for you that if you were at the cave and you heard the salt winds vision, don't be surprised if you're part of this whole thing that the week after or the, the last couple of weeks has been like, I don't know, it's just been crazy. There's been discouragement. There's been attack. There's been, I, I, thought that, I thought things were just clicking into place, but there's been a battle. Maybe I've struggled with some of my mental health, etc., etc. Probably... You're exactly the person God is after. And, and I want to encourage you that be, the enemy always attacks and wants to bury a daring dreamer at the start. But he can't keep you in the ground because Jesus defeated the ground. And what happened was is he brought him up out of the ground. See, Joseph got brought out of the ground and he went on this journey where they thought they had him, but God was exalting him all the time to the place of the daring dreamer because you cannot stop the daring dreamer. But discouragement comes and doubt comes and fear comes and personal failure comes, accusation comes. Where it comes and says, you know, just sit back. Stop being so, so silly. Stop, stop making space for that. So I don't want you to be surprised. That's just the, the enemy's tactic. Get back up. Don't waste time in that place. But step back and say, right, I'm ready. I'm just going to keep coming. I'm just going to keep coming forward. And some of you have stepped back. But God is saying it's time to step forward. But in holy fear, Noah built the ark. That says there's a call to holiness. You can't do this without holiness. If you're looking at living a compromised life, the enemy is going to take your legs out. Holiness is the name of the game. Not perfection, because none of us are perfect, only him. But through holiness, we begin to build the ark. The safety in the ark. When you're in Jesus, there is safety. The mechanism of salvation is in our bloods. The amazing thing with the ark is when God gave the plan for the ark, there weren't any windows. In fact, there was a door to, to the one side. I mentioned this. There was just one door in the whole ark because there's only one way. His name is Jesus. <laughs> picture. The, the ark was a picture of Jesus. Here it is. And it's like there's just one door. There's one way. The only way you can come is through this gate. One way. But also it said, don't put windows on the side, only on the top. And there were these very small windows about this deep on the very top of this huge arc where it let sunlight in. So the whole idea was that when the storms came and the floods and the terror from the outside and the confusion, you couldn't see any of that. You could only look upwards. And I believe that God is saying to us right now, church, you got to make sure you're looking upwards. You start looking at the side of what's going on. You start listening to the compromise of God's word and the liberalism that is in our world right now. It will erode your faith. And God is saying, you've got to keep looking up. You've got to keep looking up. And he had, these, he had these things, 40 days. They looked out and they looked and they looked for God because this is the way we posture ourselves, not down, not to the side, but up. powerful picture so guys as we finish as we finish up this message when I talk about creating space I'm hoping I'm going to spend some time this week go away and just look at scripture of how God all the time speaks to his people of saying make space 
make space, make space. Jesus at Cana, first miracle. Get all the water jars. Create space for the miracle. We haven't got any water jars. That's how some of us are. Because we fill them up with other things. Space. In 2 Kings 4, verse 3 to 4, this is a story of Elisha. There is a widow here again. He's talking about a widow, right? Who's lost her husband. And she's there in barrenness. So this is the picture all through Scripture. She's there in desperateness. The prophet Elisha comes and he says, go around because she has nothing. She's like finished. She's done. Go around and ask all your neighbors, all your neighbors. Everyone, imagine go every door. Right, I want your empty jar. I, I want your jars. I, want, I need to create space. <laughs> ask all your neighbors for empty jars. See, not full jars, empty jars. Stop bringing the full jars. Bring your empty jars. Create space. Create space. Some of your dreams around creativity and vision. God is saying, no, come on, empty them. Come, empty, ready for me to fill. Ready for me to fill. Come, come and bring it because I want to do something new. He says, don't just ask for a few. God is saying to us today, church, Freedom Church, he's saying to you into your life. He said, there is a measure of what, what, what I want to pour out to you is by the measure you will ask. In fact, you do not have because you do not ask. You're going to ask for 50,000. You're going to ask for 50 million. It's all dependent on the space we create right now. As we journey, we're going to build, create space, and we're going to see the miracle of God. We're going to make space for the miracle of God. We're going to, we're going to have buildings and places that are bigger than what we actually need because we just got this thing about creating space. We got this thing of creating space on the airwaves. So he says, don't ask just for a few. Then he says, go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. And it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going until the last jar was filled to the brim. And then the supply stopped. The supply that God has for you is never ending. His grace is never ending. There isn't a problem with the source. There's a problem with the space we create. And now God is saying, will you expand? Will you create space? Create space in your life in your calendar create space in this next couple of years create space that person who God is speaking to around academy create space right now you need to take action today you spend a week thinking about it you just come back to the original decision God is saying step out step out start to have conversations do it this is life changing what God has you don't want to miss what God has you don't want to miss it God is moving God is speaking He's saying create space church create space it is a call to bring our jars. Salt wins. And I want to bring this back up, our form to connect with salt wins right now. I want to just bring this up. Um, and our giving, you know, around our giving. Because when I talk about creating space, it's actually about how we create space with our finance. So on the slide that we have now around giving and signing up to be part of salt wins, I know we have seen over 150 people sign up since the cave to become this army, right, for salt winds. But I know there's more. I know some of you looked and maybe had a, a week to think about it, but somehow, don't know if I can create space. Because you've just packed out your space. And I want to challenge you again. Will you respond today and say, it's time for me to be a part of God's plan. Some of us perhaps have even experienced the lack. Oh, I'm not sure if I can give into this. In fact, we just think it's, well, if I had something, I would give. No, it's actually giving creates space. How do you see more provision? By letting go of what you have. 
The world says the more you can keep, the better off you'll be. God actually says, no, the more that you release, God multiplies. And we saw, you know, at the cave, I, I, I just had on my heart that night that I shared and said, you know, I think, never done this before, that there is someone or maybe a couple, someone who is going to give 10,000. And I said 10,000 pounds. And then God said, I didn't say pounds. So I said $10,000. <laughs> and then we, we heard that night that not only one couple stepped up to give 10,000, but now three couples have stepped up to give 10,000. God doesn't, because I was thinking, oh God, I don't know if we've got someone in the church that's going to like, they don't even know what salt wins is. We haven't really even given them an idea and all these people are signing up. But God says, oh, you just speak it, create the space. I'll take you from 10 to 30 in a moment. Oh. And it's, in, and it's increasing. But what's your part to play in this? I want, to, I want to thank and honor every person that's given, but I want to thank and honor those people that stepped out in such a huge way because I believe you understand what this is. You understand we want to, we want to create space for God's vision. We don't, we don't get it fully, but are we just ready to step up and say, we're going to sow into it. I'm going to step up with my time. I'm going to make the move for what God has. So as I finish now, I want you to reject small thinking, church. I want you to stop looking within the four walls of whether you are, whether that's in a fire starter, in a home, whether it's in a bigger location, wherever you are. I want you to reject small thinking and box-like thinking and a thinking that is sort of all around your agenda, thinking around the plans that you've had and say, God, I want to give it to you again. So I'm asking, would you come and lay it down and say, I want to create space. I need to clear out some things. I, I need a fresh start here. I need to create room. I need to build bigger spaces for you to move God God wants to do miracles for you but will you create the space will you sow even if there's a lag that is how you're going to see God do a miracle so right now I'm going to pray for us all Father I believe that this is for every one of us in some way that you want to move that you want to move, you want to pour out your oil, but you have said, go and get every jar you can get because there is no limit to what I want to do. And he's saying right now, create space, get ready for the miracle, clear out the clutter, clear out the agendas. He's saying, will you respond to me today? Will you give and sow into what I want to do? In Jesus' name, I pray, oh God, for that faith to arise in every one of us that says, we haven't seen it, but we're going to build it. And in holy fear, we're going to do it because of what is to come. Father, I pray now for your blessing to be over every person now. For courage and boldness as they step out and make decisions of faith. I even believe for those academy people. And I just call out even that young man right now. That young man in Jesus' name. That young woman in Jesus' name. He's disturbing your plans because there's such destiny on the back of this decision in Jesus' name. For the finances that are needed that we need to come in and bring. For the sign-ups because you're a key part of this. Today, we take action as daring dreamers and we choose to create space for our God to move. In Jesus' name. God bless you, church. Amen. God bless you. He's going to do a great thing. See you soon. Come on. Thank you so much, Pastor G, for that word. Thank you. It's like amazing, you know, what yeah, God is doing on. in our church. It's, it's just incredible how God is directing us through this series and, mm. and, and in this season. Come and on. if you want to respond to this, if you want someone to pray for you, if you want to just to respond to this message, mm. please go ahead and Come just on. write in the chat. We want to pray for you. We want to be near you. Come or on. send us an email at hello at freedomchurch.cc. We want to be in touch with you. We want to help you. Yes. Get this word in action. Yeah. Come on. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. And on. see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye.